Hey everyone, and welcome back to Civics Review. Today we're going to be talking about the Federalists and Anti-Federalists, and their big argument about how we should make our new constitution, or if we should make a new constitution at all, or try to fix the Articles of Confederation. Well, let's get to it! In today's objectives, we're going to be looking at this event called Shays Rebellion, and why it was so important. We're also going to be looking at comparing the Federalists and Anti-Federalists. We need to know who these guys are and how they thought. And then what was the ultimate outcome of the Constitutional Convention? And today we're going to start with Shays' Rebellion, because Shays' Rebellion is the event that led to the death of the Articles of Confederation and the birth of our new Constitution. So, what happened? Well, after the Revolutionary War, some time before the ratification of the Constitution, our soldiers return home victorious and happy. They've just beat the British, and uh, they're ready to go home and live their lives. Except for the fact that they weren't paid and they had to steal food or face starvation. Remember, the government under the Articles of Confederation was unable to collect taxes and do things like pay the military. So when Daniel Shays returns home, he's completely broke, he's starving, and he sees his farm is up for sale because the bank has not collected any payments from him, he loses it. Meet Daniel Shays, depicted here strangling a banker. And you know what? Daniel wasn't alone. A lot of these guys watching him strangle the banker kind of agreed with how he felt. They didn't like what was happening under the Articles of Confederation, and they sure didn't like losing their farms. So together, these angry farmers stormed the courthouse of Massachusetts and occupied it. The government workers in the courthouse sounded the emergency alarm, pulled out their tiny phones, and screamed into the receiver, Help! Help! We have somebody here that's trying to take over the courthouse. And then they patiently waited. Now, as they were waiting, they realized there's no one at home. Our government, under the Articles of Confederation, can't fund a military. Nobody's coming to rescue us. And eventually, this threat had to be put down by a private volunteer military rather than the government itself. This is a huge wake-up call for the United States of America. The states call a timeout and gather delegates to the Constitutional Convention to discuss making changes to the Articles. It was very clear after Shays' Rebellion that the Articles of Confederation was not working, and we would need to somehow give it more power to put down these rebellions. Now, as the delegates get together and discuss fixing the Articles and making some small changes, with every fix that they suggest, a new problem sort of pops up. And as they fix that problem, another problem pops up. It becomes clear that in order to fix this problem fully, we probably need to just throw the articles in the trash and start over again with a brand new constitution. And that's where these two groups begin to form at this convention. The group that wants to fix the articles and the group that wants to start over with something brand new. Now there is a lot of things that happen at this convention that most history classes go over, but for civics, thankfully, we just need to know the civic stuff. So. This video is not going to cover the things that aren't on your civics state exam. Things like who was a federalist or who was an anti-federalist should never be on your civics exam. What kind of compromises did they make? The arguments or thumb wars that they had or their secret handshakes. That stuff's not going to appear on your state exam. The state civics exam is going to ask you the difference between federalists and anti-federalists and how they felt about the Constitution. So that's what we're going to go over. Let's get to it. Now the first group we're going to focus on called themselves the Federalists, and they were in favor of a new Constitution. The Federalists realize as we try and fix the Articles of Confederation, more holes keep popping up, more problems keep happening, and so it would probably be best if we just started with something new. And the first thing that was very clear is they wanted a stronger central government. They needed to boost the power of the central government to put down things like Shays' Rebellion. We needed some leader to lead our marching band. We needed a Supreme Court to uh, interpret the laws, and we needed to give power back to the legislative branch so they could actually collect taxes. Now, the delegates that called themselves Federalists represented the businessmen and manufacturers of their states. A manufacturer understands that in order to have a successful business, your business can't be on fire, say, from a rebellion. And you yourself cannot be on fire, or your customers can't be on fire, because there's rebellion all over the place, and so we need a stronger central government in order to keep our businesses going. Now, having a stronger central government was still very scary, even for a Federalist, 
but they believed in separation of powers and checks and balances. This new constitution would divide power to each branch of government and balance them out so that one wouldn't overpower the other. And just in case, we would give each branch the power to stop the other one in case it became too powerful. Now, the Anti-Federalists were against making a new constitution. They wanted to just fix up the Articles. They understood how difficult of a task it would be, but they really didn't want a new constitution. And the reason for that was they wanted the states to keep all of their powers. They understood we needed to make some changes to the Articles because we didn't do so well against Shea's Rebellion. But if we could just pump it up a little bit more, hit the weight room, we could get the Articles enough power to deal with those problems and still let the states be in charge. Another thing that defines the Anti-Federalists is they were very concerned about the central government. And this is your official warning. We see this a lot on the EOC and on state exams. If a question on your test would say, who might have said this, a Federalist or an Anti-Federalist, and then give you an example, ask yourself, does it sound like there's a lot of concern for the government's power? In this example, it says at the end, the federal government could just take complete control. This is a very concerning statement from somebody who's worried that this power of the new government is going to take over our country. That would be said by an anti-federalist. Let's look at another one, and this time, see if you can find the concern. Okay, so when I see people won't know their leaders and will lose control over their government, I feel concern from those words. And so I know that's an anti-federalist that would have said this. And we'll do one more here because this is really worth your time and effort to get the hang of this. Okay, so we see too powerful. Whenever we see something that's too powerful or too scary, that's got to be an anti-federalist. You're going to get these right every time on your test. Onward. So during the Constitutional Convention, the anti-federalists felt like everybody wanted a new constitution, and it was kind of slipping out of their control. And so they actually looked at the laws and the rules that were in the Articles and said, you can't do this. It is not legal what we are doing here, discussing a brand new constitution. We all need to be unanimous if we want to do this, and hey, we don't want to do this. Now, the Anti-Federalists argued this over and over again, but the Federalists really didn't care, and they kind of said, look, this is where, where things are going now, so just follow along with us here. We're making a new constitution. Seeing the writing on the wall, the Anti-Federalists realize we are going to have a stronger central government, we are going to take power away from the states, and that's not what we want. So they argued we should have a list of rights. We should guarantee the rights for the little guy because the state's not going to be there to back them up. It's just going to be this big central government. So give us the Bill of Rights or we're not signing this new constitution. Both sides reached a stalemate because they couldn't find enough support for their idea. So they started writing papers or essays trying to persuade people to join their side. The Federalists wrote the Federalist Papers, and the Anti-Federalists wrote the Anti-Federalist Papers. This isn't rocket science. The Federalist Papers were written to convince the reader to please ratify and make official this new constitution that's going to make our nation much stronger. Now, the Anti-Federalists wrote their papers mostly to convince readers, look, we're going to sign this constitution, but not without a Bill of Rights. In these papers, they wrote about the horrors of the central government, and how they stepped on the little man, and how important it was to have a Bill of Rights. Now here's an official warning for EOC type questions with lots and lots of reading required. Take a look at this bad boy. This is the reaction most of my students do. They just all stand up in unison and start doing this in class. But I want you to know you don't actually have to read the entire thing. Just look at who wrote it. So we can see here this was written by a Federalist, okay, by the man, a man named Publius, which is actually Alexander Hamilton's pen name because he was a huge troll. So knowing that a Federalist wrote this, I can already gather what it's about because I know the Federalist wrote papers about convincing people to sign the Constitution make sure it was ratified. Going through the answer choices, it's very clear. The Federalists didn't feel like either branch would outpower the other, so we can cross off A and B. And then we have to look at C and D a little bit more carefully, but with a little bit of simple reading, we can find the answer, and then boom, you can become the smartest kid alive. Okay, let's wrap this up and look at the outcome. So, spoiler alert, the Federalists win, and they manage to get enough states to agree 9 out of 13 ratify and sign the Constitution. 
But the Anti-Federalists also win because they get it guaranteed we're going to have a Bill of Rights. Okay guys, that's it. That's all you need to know for Federalists versus Anti-Federalists as far as civic state exams are concerned. So after watching this video, you should be able to answer these questions with confidence. If not, go back, watch it again, and find those answers. You have to know this stuff for your state exam. Okay guys, that's it for now. Thanks so much for sticking to the end of my video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. We'll make more videos soon.